In this presentation, an intra-articular fracture about the knee will be reduced and stabilized using the large external fixator in a knee-bridging modular frame. The objectives of the exercise are to understand the clinical indications for the application of a large external fixator, the positioning and correct insertion of the shunt screws, and the construction of the knee bridging modular frame. The most common clinical indications for the application for the knee bridging modular frame include fractures with severe soft tissue damage, either open or closed, including complex fractures of the distal femur and proximal tibia. For damage control surgery in polytrauma patients, and for acute and chronic infections in both fractures and non-unions about the knee. The instruments needed are the compact air drive, the quick coupling, and the drive adapter with quick coupling for 5 mm shunt screws. Four 125 mm long, 5 mm diameter self-drilling shunt screws with a thread length of 40 mm are needed. Conventional shunt screws may be used as well. Also needed is the drill sleeve assembly which includes the handle for drill sleeves, both the long and the short 6.0, 5.0 threaded drill sleeves and the long and the short 5.0, 3.5 drill sleeves, as well as the long and the short 3.5 trocars. The universal chuck with T-handle may also be used to advance the shunt screws. Required for the construction of the knee bridging modular frame are four large MR-safe open adjustable clamps, two 11 mm diameter carbon fiber rods, two large MR-safe combination clamps, and one additional 11 mm diameter carbon fiber rod. Required to tighten the frame assembly are the 11 mm cannulated socket wrench and the 11 mm combination wrench. The bone model is secured in the clamp as if the patient were in a supine position. The drill sleeve assembly is placed directly onto the bone surface in the mid portion of the femoral shaft in the direct coronal plane. The trocar is removed, and since self-drilling, self-tapping shunt screws are used, the drill sleeve also is removed. A shunt screw is inserted into the adapter. The power drive is used to advance this first self-drilling shunt screw through the outer drill sleeve. The drill sleeve is positioned so as to ensure purchase of the shunt screw in both the lateral and the medial cortex. In the clinical situation, irrigation is recommended while inserting the shunt shunt screws. The image intensifier can be used to check the final position of the shunt screws. The tip of the self-drilling shunt screws must be anchored in the far cortex to ensure stable fixation. Penetration of the far cortex is not necessary. Once the shunt screw has been placed, it's released from the adapter and the drill sleeve assembly is removed. Another shunt screw is now inserted into the femoral shaft in the same manner as the first one. Two shunt screws will now be inserted into the tibial shaft using the same technique. 
The first of these screws should be placed in the mid-sagittal plane, about one centimeter medial to the palpable tibial crest. After the trocar is removed, the shunt screw is advanced using the power drive until it's secure in both the lateral and medial cortices. Another shunt screw is introduced in the same manner into the tibial shaft, distal to the first. To improve the stability of the external fixator, the shunt screws should be widely placed. Here the final placement of the shunt screws can be seen. The large MR safe open adjustable clamps are used to connect the shunt screws in both the femur and the tibia to a carbon fiber rod. To secure the clamp to the shunt screw, the nuts of the clamp are initially tightened by hand. The second clamp is attached and tightened in the same manner. An 11 mm diameter carbon fiber rod is snapped into place within each of the two open adjustable clamps. After additional tightening by hand, the 11 mm socket wrench is used for provisional tightening. Final tightening is done with the combination wrench. Using the same technique, Two more large MR-safe open adjustable clamps are attached to the shunt screws in the tibia. And connected with the second 11 mm diameter carbon fiber rod. Once again, the nuts of the clamps are first tightened by hand. They are then provisionally tightened with the 11 mm socket wrench. and are definitively tightened with the combination wrench. The ends of the carbon fiber rods attached to the shunt screws in both the tibia and the femur are connected to a third rod using one large MR-safe combination clamp for each rod. The nuts of the clamps are gently tightened by hand. The partial frame in the tibia is used as a handle to reduce the fracture and to ensure that the correct length, alignment, and rotation are restored.
The reduction is maintained and secured by tightening the nuts of the MR safe combination clamps with the 11 mm socket wrench. Final tightening is done with the combination wrench. The knee bridging modular frame is now complete. However, increased stability can be provided by adding a neutralization rod to span the knee from the distal shunt screw in the femur to the proximal shunt screw in the tibia. The additional implants needed are two large open adjustable clamps and one 11 mm diameter carbon fiber rod. It is sufficient to attach the rod to one shunt screw in each main fragment. This presentation has demonstrated the clinical indications, the positioning and correct insertion of the shunt screws, and the construction of the knee bridging modular frame.